Tenet is the Christopher Nolan mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world some really simple shit you were just too damn stupid to get. It ends off at a stupid opera. And just when you think nothing could make an opera awesome, you're proven wrong. So these heroes start wrecking the lame ass instruments. And what kind of man plays a fucking flute? But this opera house is metal as fuck and terrorists wasting people is so boring, the entire audience falls asleep. Which is when the Copas show up and start doing some Commander Dale Brown shit. And a little ninja-ing when this guy starts freaking out. Look, bro, if you're gonna be a little bitch every time a bullet almost hits you, then don't go to the fucking opera. So they make him undress in the light bulb room until he gets his shit together. Meanwhile, they go around taking all the explosives because the Copa hate fun. But like I said, this opera's metal and it fucking shoots one. Which is Copa's cue to haul ass out of there. But first, fuck those balcony bitches. The opera house didn't like that, so now he's gonna pay. With no time and few options, he gets one chance and makes it count. This is one spark plug he won't be spitting. The next day, it's now a part of him, and that kind of power is no joke. It'll open the right doors, but some of the wrong ones too. When he asks what the fuck that means, he gives him this. Use it carefully. So he tells him that's great, now please stop talking to him. He then takes the first car he sees, because okay, and heads to the science division of this science building. With a high-vis vest and a clipboard you can get almost anywhere. And you have a giant nose, so fuck you too. Since you're wearing a lab coat and look really weird, you must be a scientist. Something worse. Look, lady, we just saw some opera shit that made no goddamn sense. No friends at dusk, huh? And we still have over two hours of movie left. You better make this fast and simple. Don't try to understand it. Feel it. You're a shit scientist, but fuck it, that works. Now that the science is rock solid, they can bungee jump up buildings and you can't say shit about it. Literally anything is possible. This is your operation. Bullshit. Thankfully, the movie realizes it's gone completely off the rails and gets things back on track by flying off the building. Now Copa has a meeting with Michael Caine. I gather you have an interest in a certain Russian national. He's had to work with one of those before, and it almost ended his career. How that man has any fans makes zero fucking sense. I've warned them he's feeding them rubbish, but they don't seem to care. Sorry, but the service here is terrible, which makes it really hard to focus. I ordered my hot sauce an hour ago. That kick really brings out the flavor. This is total bullshit. After airing his grievances with the overdressed back of house staff, he sees something nobody's ever seen before. A woman crying. Not always, apparently. Not always, but usually. The next day, they're at an airport that just got a new Boeing plane. And holy shit. It lasted way longer than usual. Then they get word that Boeing sent them a whole fleet. Then they come across some crazy things and this shit's been hard to follow. So he asks if this airport's in Chicago. He tells him he's been struggling too, but he's pretty sure it's Norway. Then he gets attacked by a fucking ninja, which comes out of left field and doesn't fit the tone of the movie. But who fucking cares? It's a ninja attack and I am all in. Then it turns out the ninja's rewinding. 
And it's all part of Boeing's new marketing campaign, where their planes are created in a fireball before flying to an airport full of alive people. He'd love to stay and finish this, but people won't stop coming up to this engine that keeps exploding. And he wants to watch, so he zoinks his way out of there. Later, he goes out to dinner and is having the same old boring small talk. How would you like to die? When they discover something they have in common. Very gratifying to watch a man you don't like try to pull his own balls out of his throat before he chokes. He likes where you're going with this. Just tell me if you've slept with my wife yet. So now they're besties and racing the sick F-50s. And she's proving that just cause she's a woman doesn't mean she's not a valuable <laughs> son of a bitch, not again. But they agree it's not her fault. It's theirs for letting her be there in the first place. It was my own mistake. Then we get a quick glimpse of their lavish lifestyle. You seem spirited today. These snobby fucks are so rich, they eat priceless paintings for breakfast. That's how I built this life. And what the fuck even is that? Now they're out for a drive on the mean streets of Estonia, where everyone's armed to the teeth. When the movie throws a curveball at us, and now he's a firefighter. But in Estonia, firefighters give zero fucks and will wreck the police's shit. And if you want a lunch break, you gotta jump from the moving truck. Cause they're not stopping for you. Oh boy, he can't wait to see what his old lady packed him. And what the fuck is this? I can't understand this. His wife's a shitty cook. It's actually pretty simple. Thankfully, someone's driving like a jackass to help take his mind off of it. But son of a bitch, I don't think you have to exchange information when your accident fixes damage. But who the fuck knows? And it looks like it was an inconvenient time for both of them. And trust me, he gets where you're coming from. But there are rules, and that's what separates us from the animals. Then things start snowballing, and they crash fix another car. Their insurance company is gonna drop their rates through the floor. This is bad. So they make a deal that if he takes his lunch, They'll call it even. Which is when one of those midday firefighter kidnappings happen. Which Estonia is famous for. <laughs> this time it was this guy who can't believe you tried to weasel your way out of an insurance refund with that shitty lunch. <laughs> While he did deserve that, the fire department shows up and saves the day. For once. He was able to moonwalk his way out of there, but if he wanna be starting something, he should know that he don't stop till he gets enough. So he goes after him, and holy shit, he's the worst male driver I've ever seen. But he starts getting the hang. It's no big deal, he's just got... Luckily, they managed to save him by using the highly advanced burrito method that we don't have time to get into. And fantastic news, she's here too. She has the right to know why she might die. So he tells her, probably driving her some shit. Now they're at the airport again, and oh Boeing, you little rascals. Then some lunatic attacks him for no reason. <laughs> Things are going great, and he lands a sick suplex and wall flip. But then the attacker does some Jedi shit. And he can already feel his lame and gay levels rising, which is his cue to bail. But son of a bitch, now there's another one. And god damn it, he can't tell any of them apart, but he also can't say that, so fuck it, he's out. 
Now they're putting the firefight back into Firefighter. Which sounds ridiculous, but you can't argue with the results. But the fire's not going out without a fight. And the firefighting, firefighting, firefighters is no fucking joke. So out of pure desperation, they launch an attack on its core. But son of a bitch, the door's locked. Well, there goes that. I guess it's all over now. Then the most convenient thing happens when he notices one of the firefighters sleeping and tells him to wake the fuck up and open the door. So they grab the source of the fire's anger and gravel surf their way out of there. Meanwhile, they've patched things up and are enjoying a lovely time, but he's not a young man anymore, and things don't work like they used to. So while they wait for that, he asks if she could help him out with some sunscreen. And holy shit, not only is the whole gun thing not a part of it, but what the fuck is this? Either way, she did try to kill him earlier, so again, this is on him. So, anyways, we find out what that fire was so pissed about, and god damn it, that fucking lunch. Now they understand the pain that poor fire felt. What's happened's happened. But damn it, that doesn't make it right, so he goes off to apologize. And you probably forgot about her, but don't worry, he didn't. And together, they celebrate their victory by murdering the fuck out of her. 